Let's think a little bit about how we can tell whether our body is processing glucose properly and whether maybe we, we have diabetes. And I want you all to take all of this with a huge grain of salt, because I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. My goal here is to kind of just explore the subject with you and uh, to try for all of us to get a better understanding of things. So let's think about what might happen after we have a meal. So let me draw a little chart over here. So let's call this, let's call this hours. hours. And then on the vertical axis, I'm going to talk about our concentration of sugar in the blood. So blood sugar concentration. Blood sugar, or I sure you could call it glucose concentration. Blood sugar concentration. When we're talking about blood, blood sugar, we're talking about glucose concentration. And let me draw a couple of points on this chart. So maybe this is 50. And our units are going to be milligrams per deciliter. And actually, let me just do it this way. Let me just say that everything is in milligrams per deciliter. And we'll talk in future videos about well, what kind of how we can relate these units to, to everyday terms. But let's say that this right here is 50. This right here is 100. This right here is 150. And let's mark it right here at 200. So let's think about what would happen for a normal person. Let me mark some hours over here. So hour 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's probably good enough. So a normal person, when they haven't eaten anything for a long time, let's say greater than 8 hours, so their fasting blood sugar will be right around 80 milligrams per deciliter, give or take a little bit. There's a range around that, but I just want to show you what would happen to a normal person. So an 80, 80 milligrams per deciliter, their blood sugar will kind of be should hopefully be right around there. And sometimes this fasting blood sugar, and maybe we're assuming that this is in the morning, so maybe this hour one is 7 in the morning, so they haven't eaten for a while, and that's why it's fasting blood sugar. This is also, you'll hear and kind of, you'll sometimes hear doctors, I've heard my wife say this word without knowing what it meant, they'll sometimes say preprandial. Preprandial, which is a very fancy word, which just means before a meal. Prandial is literally before eating. After the meal, you're talking postprandial. So it's a very fancy word for a very simple idea, eating. So let's say at hour two, this individual eats breakfast. So this is right. This is where the individual is going to eat breakfast. Now, in a normal person, when that person eats breakfast, there will be some carbohydrate some carbohydrates in that breakfast, and it will uh, be broken down into glucose, and that glucose will enter the bloodstream. And so their blood glucose will go up. Their blood glucose will go up. It'll slowly go up. And I was reading some studies. They say it kind of, sp it kind of spikes at about 45 minutes into a meal. So let's see, 45 minutes is over there. So maybe it'll go up to about there. And in a normal individual, the blood glucose really shouldn't go up above 120 milligrams per deciliter. And all of, you know, there's obviously exceptions to all of these. We're just kind of saying like a normal breakfast, a normal person. They're not, you know, they're not eating a pint of honey. They're not doing something crazy. So let's say 120 would be right around, right around there. A normal person, you wouldn't. Someone who does not have diabetes, it would be unlikely that it would go above that. And then actually, after about two hours, they're getting pretty close to normal. They get back under 100 milligrams per deciliter. And then you go beyond two hours, they just kind of get close back to their baseline, to that 80 milligrams per deciliter. So once again, this is. This is normal. And of course, you know, don't freak out if you were to take a blood test one morning and you're at like 85 milligrams per deciliter. You're still not far off from normal. So obviously, there's some variation from person to person. Now, if someone has diabetes, if, if either they, don't, they have type 1, they don't have enough insulin to actually process the glucose, or if they have enough insulin, but their body is desensitized to it, the insulin isn't being processed properly, so they can't process the, the glucose, we've seen that the glucose concentrations will go up. And so in general, if you were to wake up one morning after not having eaten for more than eight hours, 
And you were to pick your prick your finger with one of those little glucose monitors you can get at the drugstore, and in your and in your finger the the blood sugar levels, if you were to find them to be, let's say you were to find them to be at 100, let's say 140, 140. That's 140 milligrams per deciliter. It's a good indication. I mean, you shouldn't freak out. You should do multiple tests and make sure that that you know it wasn't a false reading or any of that. And you should definitely see a doctor. Once again, don't view this as any type of medical advice. That is not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is just to understand a little bit of what's going on. Don't don't yeah don't change your lifestyle based on anything I tell you. All right. So if you but if you do experience that. It looks like, at least just from that one data point, that your body isn't processing sugar properly. Because you've had over eight hours to process the sugar for insulin to go in your bloodstream and, and allow glucose to be taken up and get back down to a normal level, but it still hasn't gone there. So if you were to if you were to test a, a value like that, you you should you should be concerned. In general, the threshold, and I've I've seen multiple thresholds here, are between one hundred and I've seen high kind of mid one twenties to one thirty milligrams per deciliter. So that's it's kind of let me do it in this range. It's kind of if you are above, if your fasting blood sugar is above this line right here. Remember the fasting blood sugar, not after you've eaten a meal. Your preprandial, before a meal. If it is above that threshold right over there, then you should at least you should definitely see a doctor and, and make sure that they can they can you know see if you if you have diabetes. But this would be cause for concern. The other thing is if after a meal it spikes well beyond that if we're talking if it gets above 180 and you know once again these are all just thresholds that people you know doctors have come up with and, and researchers have come up with that say hey this is a good indication that somehow you are not processing glucose properly so 180 180 is up here and I'm drawing it as a squiggly line because it's kind of a range. It's not like, you know, it's not like if 100, if your blood glucose is 124, you're safe, and all of a sudden at 125 you have diabetes. No, they're, you know, they're not that different than each other. But they have to set up some threshold, so that, just to kind of have a threshold, I guess. So if your blood sugar after eating a meal were to spike up to, let's say, 200. Once again, that would be cause for concern. So in general, if someone has diabetes, because they're not processing the glucose properly, after their, their blood glucose might look something like this. So maybe their fasting blood glucose is right around 125, 130. It can move around. Then they have a meal. Then it might spike up. It, they, they might have, obviously, they can process some of the glucose. Otherwise, they would, they would die. But it's not being processed properly, so the glucose levels don't go down to where they should, and maybe you get some some uh, a glucose gets taken up from the blood. Obviously, they're living, so their cells are metabolizing something, but it never gets down to the normal 80 milligrams per deciliter. It might go, it might settle down back to something in the 120 range or something like that, which would be cause for concern. And in general, if you're someplace, in I've seen the, the threshold. If you're above 100, at a, on a fasting basis, that's cause for concern. You should maybe adjust your lifestyle. And if you're above if you if you're above 120 130 after a meal once again this you should also be slightly worried that you might maybe are pre-diabetic or you have some risk of di developing diabetes so this is what this is a high if someone has blood sugar like this they're probably diabetic and if someone has blood sugar like this they should be they should be worried. But once again, I am not a doctor. Don't take any of this as an advice. This is really just our attempt to, to understand things a little bit better.